Hey, I'm Talissa. And I'm Sarah. This is a nice bucket. And this is Studio 20 Live. Here we are, week five. That's right, thank you for tuning in to another Studio 20 Live. Yeah. Week five blues. Yeah, week four. Week four, yeah. Getting <laughs> ahead of yourself. Yeah. yeah, sensing that students are a little bit down the dumps around uni. Yeah. Have a pick me up. It's like the first time first time this semester that the assessments start to be due yeah. this week. So it's Pressure's on. That's right. And I was just talking to the guys at the coffee shop and they were saying that people have been buying a lot more coffee this yeah. week as and well. you as well today. Yeah, my third double shot I've had today. But that's okay because I'm ready for Studio 20 Live. Health <laughs> tips here on Studio 20 yeah, Live. Don't, don't copy me. Uh, we do have have some pretty cool things though today for the show we've got a pop-up with the pop-up crew yeah we love their work we do love their work we have a new segment called make it rain which is about um student money advice and tips that's right and we're also going to be heading along with Erin Ramsey who jumps out of a plane so that's pretty exciting but let's jump straight into the show yeah first up we've got Justin Yerbury in the studio with us who's studying motor neuron disease or sorry researching motor neuron disease at the Illawarra Health and Medical Research Institute he's going to shed some light on the disease because it's part of the massive phenomenon that's of social right. media which is the ice bucket challenge so this is in the limelight <laughs> Hello, thank you for joining us. I see you've dried off after this morning's challenge and you, you yes. and your team just did it. Yes. How'd it go? Uh, it was cold. <laughs> it was, no, it was good. We, yeah, we had a bit of fun. Yeah, awesome. Let's check it out. Get your ice ready. All right. Let's go, people. Ready? Wow, so many of you got involved. Yeah, I love it, having a bit of an ice fight at the end there as well. <laughs> yes, you've got, to, you've got to take the, you know, the uh, fun where you can. Yeah, right. um, so we've seen lots of sort of social media things like this. There was the neck nomination beer challenge, which no. was, <laughs> yeah. there was the um, no, ma makeup. no makeup selfie. So mm -hmm. tell us about the ice bucket challenges. What's different about this sort of trend? Well, it, this is, or for us at least, this is a, um, I guess, raising awareness for, specifically for motor neuron disease or ALS as they call it in America. But it seems to be a phenomenon that surpasses anything that I've ever seen raising awareness for motor neuron disease before. Mm -hmm. Now it's been trending. I understand that obviously a lot of the celebrities that have been doing it mm. um, have been giving it to the ALS charities over in America. If you know Australians want to get involved and uh, get in on the Ice Bucket Challenge, who can they be donating things uh, money to? So uh, in Australia, it's the, known as MND Australia, and you can have a look at the website. Uh, MND Australia or ost.asn.au and you can uh, they have a, a web page explaining the challenge and uh, and how to donate towards awesome. that. Yeah, great. And um, for the viewers who have sort of seen the ice, ice bucket challenge, think it's a bit of fun, but not sure what it all means. Mm. Can you just shed some light on basically what motor neuron disease is? Yeah. So motor neuron disease is a terrible neurological disorder. So once people are diagnosed. Uh, they find that their muscles start to waste. And this is, happens in a progressive manner, so it might start fingertips or um, in your feet and then progresses to other muscles till eventually be you become paralyzed, can't speak, can't swallow, and eventually can't breathe. And, and so people generally die around about 27 months on average after they've been diagnosed. So it's, it truly is a terrible disease, but the lifetime risk is around about one in 400 people. Um, but it, it is very, uh, not very well known. So this is a fantastic opportunity for us to raise awareness in, in the community and to, and to raise much needed funds to find a treatment or, or even a cure for this disease. Mm -hmm. And then you're in, uh, in, 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 uh, interested in the <laughs> research side of things. Yes. What's yeah. been going on with you and your team and what are you looking at at the moment? So we're very interested in understanding how the disease progresses and so we are trying to study how, like I mentioned, it, you know, it starts in one place in the body and, and moves to other places because we think that 
if we can stop that progression, we, can't pro we probably can't recapture neurons that are lost, but maybe we can stop the disease in its tracks. Yeah, and as yeah. well as like um, Oprah Winfrey and Justin mm. Bieber doing it, we even saw yesterday um, someone with motor neuron disease who had done their own ice bucket yeah. challenge. He was speaking through the computer. The I'm computer, sure yeah, he yeah. was completely yeah. paralysed, but mm. he was speaking through some sort of computer program. And he tipped that on was ice really bucket. Cool too. I had an ice bucket <laughs> tipped on him, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think it's, it's one of those um, diseases where people uh, they understand the urgency of the research and for us to find a cure and so um, people really get into it. Yeah, I think I saw that for at least the US charity they've raised 15 million, is it up to? I think, I think well, I've today I heard that they're up to above 20 million. Oh wow, that's well, so, a jump, um, massive. Yeah, so I, and I'm, I mean I can't speak for the numbers and yeah. I've only heard the same but as what you But it's huge. It's <laughs> massive, it's yeah. a lot of money. So and I think in Australia we've, um, it's really just translated People now understand that it's for motor neuron disease yeah. um, because initially everyone was saying ALS. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think so far we've we've raised tens of thousands of dollars in Australia. Yeah. Yeah. So we, but I think we're just starting. Just shows yeah. another thing that social media is great for, like yeah. positive changes yeah. and stuff. That's yeah. right. So pretty excited that we're actually going to get in on the ice bucket challenge. Someone in the studio is going to be taking Mystery it on today. Mystery person. Yeah. Exciting <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for joining us and That's shedding some light on the disease. And um, we hope it raises lots more for the charity. My pleasure. Thank yeah. you. And now it's time for the news with Kat. Let's see what's making today's headlines. Thanks guys. The Islamic State of Iraq and Al-Sham stated they have killed photojournalist James Foley as payback for American military operations against ISIS in Iraq. They are now threatening to behead journalist Stephen Sotloff if President Obama does not cease airstrikes in Iraq. A video uploaded to YouTube depicts Foley reciting ISIS threats against America, after which he is decapitated. Foley had been working for international news organisations, including Global Post and AFP, when he was kidnapped in Syria in November 2012. Liberia's president has imposed a nighttime curfew and quarantined an area in Monrovia as the country fights to halt the deadly Ebola outbreak. The curfew is in place from 9pm to 6am and security forces will ensure people are controlled within West Point, where residents attacked an Ebola observation centre on Saturday. These measures have ensued as three health workers in the country who received an experimental drug for the disease are showing initial signs of recovery. The disease has killed over 1,200 people, with an additional 2,240 infected, based on World Health Organization reports. Jump-proof ticket barriers will replace hip-high barriers throughout Sydney train stations to decrease the number of Australians costing taxpayers $70 million each year by evading rail ticket fares. According to New South Wales government figures, 8% of weekday train commuters do not buy a ticket or misuse their concession cards. The new gates, which will have two chest-high panels, are on order for stations on the North West Rail Link, now under construction. The gates will be funded as part of the Opal Electronic Fair Card budget. Australian solar company Pollinate Energy is lighting up disadvantaged communities in India, giving them access to solar lights. The company was founded following India's two-day blackout in 2012, which left over half a billion Indians in darkness. With over 6,000 lights sold to 500 communities, Pollinate Energy has made lighting a more affordable and accessible source, improving lifestyle and employment opportunities for locals. And finally, muggles are rejoicing this week as J.K. Rowling, author of the Harry Potter series, has released a new story onto her online site, Pottermore. The 500-word story depicts the life of eccentric singing sorceress Celestina, who is mentioned throughout the original books. The new writing follows a short story posted to Pottermore last month that reunited the book's main characters, now in their 30s. With so many fans eager to read Rowling's latest instalment, the website briefly crashed. It's evident that even now, this timeless story has deeply affected a generation and will always remain popular. Thanks for that, Kat. And if you have any more breaking news for us, um, feel free to tweet us on hashtag Studio20Live. Okay. But I'm um, coming up some breaking, sorry, some breaking news this morning that happened. Yeah, in Wollongong, St Mary's Star of the Sea College was actually evacuated. Yeah, at about 9am they received a bomb threat from an anonymous person. So yeah, about 1,000 students and over 100 staff were evacuated Crazy. from the school. Uh, the school did send out a text message though with the police just saying that it was a hoax and that all students are safe back in class. Yeah. And they're all fine about that. Yes, so. that's good news. And the mm -hmm. staff and 
Brisbane Police also commented that um, the girls got out very fast in three minutes flat and were very calm about it. That's so crazy. good work there. If you've ever seen the school and it's huge, yeah. so that's really well done on their part. Yeah. Obviously all those practice evacuations are paying <laughs> off. Uh, little Usain Bolt in the making perhaps. Yeah, Sally Pearson. <laughs> Sally Pearson. Yeah. But let's make like Usain and bolt onto the next segment. Segway. Um, this is our <laughs> Make It Rain, our new money segment focusing on student debt. That's right. They have been involved in a car accident where they've caused damage and they don't have insurance and they're trying to work out how to manage sometimes considerable amounts of debt, fines, um, students who have done the wrong thing, parked in the wrong places, not done anything about it, potentially accumulated a lot of fines, credit card issues, people who have run up more money than they can pay on credit card and are now facing you know, enforcement proceedings, high purchase agreements um, where students purchase things not really understanding the full um, depth of what it is that they're signing up for. Doing nothing is not the right thing to do. If some you are having a debt crisis that you need to get help because it might go away. Not very good for your mental health. <laughs> no, because otherwise you will end up stressed and it can impact on relationships and um, your study and you know if you're using licenses and things like that your ability to actually work. And you don't want to end up in a situation where you're encouraged to get involved in gambling lead to ultimately horrendous things like suicide so it's really really important that you manage your debt before it's really taken over your life and you feel like you don't have any control. <laughs> Where is it? <laughs> <laughs> this is my new favourite segment because we get to do the best dance move ever. Oh there it is! There it is! <laughs> Um, yeah we hope that this segment can give you some money tips in the future maybe some saving tips on how to shop and save money at Woolies. And also inspire you to listen to the song which includes the words make it rain. Yeah. Either one. Does it? This is totally You're going to sing to it? I'm going to sing to it. <laughs> there no, we go for I next week. That, um, that was Deb Langdon, though, um, who was on that video, who is from the UOW Legal Clinic, and she was running the Money Woes and Student Debt Workshop as, as part of the Good Life series this week. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Crazy that I never would have thought of car accidents as racking up debt, but I know from experience, yeah. a few friends, you know, have had little accidents here and there. For sure. And it, it does, you know, add up and yeah. you get into debt so quickly. And um, Deb really made the point that if you're in an accident, make sure that you get the person's name, address, license number, insurance, take mm -hmm. photos of everything yeah. and it can literally save you thousands of dollars. That's crazy. So, yeah. uh, up next we have Shortcut with Erin and we're going to be jumping out of a plane. <laughs> Not us. Her. We're <laughs> alright. It's the heart racing. Nerve wracking. It's crazy. Intense. Unreal. Freaking amazing. Anticipation is good. Experiencing skydiving can only be described after doing it yourself, but even then it can be hard to find the words. Probably be good to say, hey, I jumped out of a plane. Most people are just like, no, I fly in planes to go to a different destination, not jump out of them. <laughs> this will probably top the most craziest thing I think I've ever done. Whether you're seeking an adrenaline rush or wish to admire the view from 15,000 feet, the team at Skydive the Beach will always make you feel safe and welcomed. Well, something that I sort of fell into, <laughs> excuse the pun, but every six months the equipment needs to be taken apart, inspected, um, if any repairs are needed, um, I take care of that. This small skydiving community is full of characters that work in the air and on the ground. I basically gear up all the customers, make sure they're ready to go for all the jumpers, we're setting up uh, like the landing area. You definitely, you'd learn a lot about the sport. These guys are really, really experienced here. Yeah, they are very good at geeing up their uh, their customers up the back though. We've got a lot of interesting questions. Some people ask if the if the plane actually stops when they jump out. Uh, are we all going in the same plane? Do we land by ourselves or do we go with an instructor? Skydive the Beach has only the most experienced instructors and it can take a while before becoming qualified. You technically need a thousand to get the license. Uh, I've done about 160 solo jumps. Despite free falling for 60 seconds, there really is nothing to fear when jumping with these instructors. The guys that um, take care of the equipment here, um, they only pack the main parachutes. Um, to do that, it requires the person to do 10 supervised packs 
um, to fill out a short exam. Some of the thrill-seeking instructors have been jumping for five years, while some have been doing it for a lot longer. I've been doing tandem since 87. It's completely different. The techniques are vastly improved. The design has completely changed. Each week, more than 450 parachutes are opened, over 5,000 litres of plane fuel is used, and hundreds of daredevils jump from a plane. Now it's my turn. All the nerves and anticipation are worth it once completing the dive, and it leaves you with an unforgettable experience. Just seeing everything from a different perspective is absolutely amazing. I recommend everyone should try it at least once in their life. Have you ever jumped out of a plane before? I haven't. Um, I actually black out during free falls, so oh I don't God. think I'd just be hanging in the. <laughs> well, have you free falled something else before? Uh, well, rides. I can't go on amusement oh, okay. park rides. Oh, I, I hate rollercoasters. Paraglided, though. <laughs> yeah. And that was really, really fun off a two kilometre high mountain. That's pretty just, dangerous. You run off though. the edge. At least it's not like the rush. It's more like, wee! It's, it's literally yeah. like you're just waving your wings and just flying. It's pretty nice to but be a bird just for a day. It, it was really nice. Yes. I think it'd be really cool to, um, to hang and glide though, so that's yeah. something I'd like to do. Yeah, if you want to win a hang gliding experience, actually you can enter the Faces and Places competition. You can win first prize is a uh, Sydney Harbour Bridge climb mm -hmm. and second prize is a hang, um, hang gliding experience as well as photos or in-flight videos, whatever they do. Yeah. Um, you can just email entertainment at uaw.edu.au and enter a face from around the world to someone doing a really cool thing mm -hmm. or a place that you visited. So easy to win. Yeah, So Why have not? a go at that one. <laughs> um, coming up next, we're going to take a look at what's on in Wollongong. Exciting stuff on in Wollongong this yeah, weekend. Yeah, it's a big week. Yeah, there's also the Froth and Bubbles uh, Festival Day at the Wind Entertainment Centre. It actually yep. goes for three days though, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And that's like a beer cider sort that's of festival. That's right, beer yeah. cider festival. Um, there's lots of local ciders and beers and I'm going to be there, yeah. so why not head along? Speaking of froth and buffles, bubbles, bubbles. How's, that, how's our water going? Oh, it's nice and it's cold. It's freezing and there's big clumps of ice which are going to be nice. Oh, I'd hate to be the person out. taking this on. People's heads. <laughs> Who's it going to be? It wouldn't be <laughs> fun, I can tell you that much. I just think people make a bigger deal out of it. Than they it do, is, they are pretty dramatic, yeah. yeah. But <laughs> maybe, hopefully, our person will be just as dramatic for good television. That's we'll it. see. Yeah. We'll see. Um, and also, coming up tonight at Unibar, in terms of what's on, is the UOW Band Comp final. Very so, exciting. So, yeah, it's been running for like sort of five heats now. Yeah. So, we've got Truparossa, We Came for Dinosaurs, Rivet City, El Grande, and Basil Kite. And Basil's Kite. So, massive lineup of local talent. So, get along to support that. Yeah, awesome. Uh, we Speaking of what's on, we've got a new segment today. It is entertainment news, and that's with our little gem from the studio, Kevin. Thanks, guys. At the Marigong Theatre Company this week, we have Phantom of the Opera playing until the 24th. Next week, on the 26th, Kate Miller Heideke will be performing some of her songs. On the 28th, Doug Anthony All Stars will also be performing there. In the cinemas, there are four popular movies for you to watch. There is Guardians of the Galaxy, The Expendables 3, Lucy, and coming out today is The Inbetweeners 2. On TV, the 24th also features the premieres of the MTV Music Awards from America, Peter Capaldi as the new Doctor Who, and finally, The Big Bang Theory. No, I'm just kidding. It's all reruns. Thanks, guys. Back to you in the studio. Okay, coming up next, we've got um, our pop-up guys who are doing the future of journalism That's this right. week. A more so, serious topic. Yeah, they're sort of seeing whether BuzzFeed qualifies as journalism and saw what our UOW students think. Let's take a look. Oh my god, have you heard about all this like bad stuff happening in the news right now? There's like so many wars going on, it's really depressing. Yeah, I have, but have you seen the 15 funniest cat gifts of the summer? Oh, no, what? Can be 
you that it's not such a professional level? Absolutely not. Maybe not so much. I think only if they have facts. If these lists on Buzz, BuzzFeed can be made by anybody, the author that you know, creates it has no authority. I think they are because they are people that are yes, documenting or researching like an opinion they might have. They're, they're interesting to read. Yeah, I'll call it journalism. Journalism, in essence, should strive to be as objective as possible, but if these lists can be made by anybody, they can be lathered with bias. What they could be saying might not be true. It like, was sort of just readily available on Facebook and people were just sort of like, if any pages that you like might just share it, and you're like, oh, that looks interesting, so you sort of click into it. But it might, like you said, like, might not necessarily be true. Currently, it's easy to digest because people these days have really short attention spans. It's changed journalism from being important to becoming irrelevant. I reckon now it's not it's not necessarily about news anymore, it's just about um, holding their attention for a short amount of time to basically like yell a message at them. It's determined upon whether you want to hear it or not and it's as easy as scrolling faster so not have to even bother with the issues. People aren't reading everything, they're just reading what they're interested in so it doesn't make them smarter and more knowledgeable about the world. I think journalism changed a lot it is in my lifetime with social media. It makes it more instantaneous, so if an event happens, um, you see it straight away. It's a lot quicker. Multiple sources of information that there are now. Uh, yes, I guess it has changed a little bit. A lot of the news I get would be from liking like SBS or Facebook and it pops up on my news feed, so you're getting little bits of information more regularly. The nature in which society views journalism and the medium in which it's been brought upon has changed. It's not going to be long stories anymore. It'll have positive effects because people can have the information readily available. It's, it's going to be lots of short stories. It's also going to have negative effects because there's things like superfoods and, you know, like anti-vaccinations um, that they post and it's not necessarily true. It'll lead to the creation of a lot of bias and incorrect opinions. So as soon as someone reads it on something that's readily available like Facebook, they just believe it and they'll consume it and then share it. People are noticing that real issues um, are being passed. It might damage journalism, but hopefully it'll still be able to prevail in the future. <laughs> well, welcome back from that. <laughs> yeah, it's a very interesting topic, the future of journalism. It's so true that things are becoming more like instantaneous. Mm -hmm. People want to click on things, you know, live blogging, live tweeting, live TV is where it's at, so it's yeah. easily consumable. <laughs> well, yeah. That's right, and I mean, if there's ever an event or an accident or something's happening, someone who is just a citizen is out there taking photos and tweeting about it yeah. and hashtagging it, so it's so easy to be able to see what's going on without, you know, professional journalists being there. Yeah, and that's why I was sort of questioning whether that's a threat to the journalism profession, but um, it's all about working together, that whole two-way interaction to involve the public as well, mm, because otherwise right. they'll turn off. It's yeah. all about that these days. And it's also about learning how to use new mediums um, and new forms of media to tell stories. And someone I spoke to uh, last week was very excited about that and finding a new way to share stories, and that's Kumi Taguchi. So let's see what happened at the open day with her. Today, for the first time since 1997, the University of Wollongong held an open day for future students. Plenty of faculty members and current students were on hand to give information out throughout the day. A communications and media panel was hosted by Professor Sue Turnbull for people interested in creative arts. Students and parents had the opportunity to ask questions and learn more about studying in both media and journalism at UOW. A member of the panel included UOW alumni and ABC reporter Kumi Taguchi, who shared her own advice and knowledge. What I've learned is that um, it's like a slow burn. Do it at your own pace in the way that you feel comfortable with and all the opportunities that you want and dream of will absolutely inevitably happen, but they'll happen in a way that suits you and your personality. The ex uow student also shared her knowledge on the future of journalism. The desire to learn about the world and to hear stories never dies. And it's more about being adaptable and figuring out how to tell those stories. And I just think this is an incredible time to be, t to be telling stories. Talissa Bazaz, UOW TV. That was a bit of a taste of the journalism department and what they did for Open Day. That's and it's right. interesting that Open Day hasn't been held for nearly 20 years. The last time was the day that Princess Diana passed away. Yeah, it's yeah. so strange to think that. Um, but Open Day was such a great opportunity for all these future students to kind of ask questions to anyone yeah. who was there. We were both there, so we were that's inspiring right. the, the younger generation. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty what much I was our doing. generation. <laughs> 
<laughs> but um, yeah, it was great to, um, to see some new faces that hopefully will be around campus soon. And that's right. But um, yeah, coming up next is the rant. Today we're talking about people on the train and their behaviour. The quiet carriages on trains because people talk way too loud on them and they should go to other carriages and they play their music too loud through their headphones, which drives me also crazy. It's quiet for a reason. I hate when people talk on quiet carriages because they're quiet for a reason and antisocial people want to sit there and have a nice antisocial time without the noise of others. If people want to be loud, they should move to another carriage, which isn't a designated quiet carriage. Awesome. Well, it's not too long before the Ice Bucket Challenge happens. Who's it going to be? in the studio. Uh, but at first, we have our talent for this week. It's Jessica Allen. She's back for season two and she's performing her song, Fly. I cannot see through the darkness pulling you. I'm telling the truth, you know it's true. Great to have you back. You've got no such a stunning voice. <laughs> what was the um, inspiration behind the song Fly? Um, well, just like my other song that I've previously performed. Yeah. Um, it's about a certain person. Okay. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, it's about basically getting over it yeah. and moving on, really. It's a good way to use music, isn't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> Get all the emotions out. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever auditioned for any singing shows like X Factor and things, I or have. do you prefer to take your own part? Um, well, I do my own thing, yeah. but I love auditioning for whatever yeah. comes along, so I do whatever I can. Yeah. Okay. And you've been um, performing a bit lately or doing some gigs? Yeah, so yep. I've got um, a lot of gigs booked for this year now, starting to get it all back up, so okay. getting pretty keen for my next performances. Very cool. Yeah. And when did you sort of start to, to think that this could be a real career for you, doing um, singing and playing <laughs> the guitar? Well, I started guitar when I was in primary school and wow. I wrote my first song in year six. Oh, very good. And, um, Do you remember what it was about? <laughs> Yeah, sort of. Another no, boy, maybe, that no, was troubling you really. in year six. <laughs> I can't really remember, really. I just remember how the song goes. But, yeah, um, yeah I performed that in the school talent quest. Yeah. And then from then, um, I tried to write more songs and I didn't like the guitar because I hurt my fingers too much. Yeah. And then I decided to get back up and I started doing gigs a couple of years ago. So. Awesome. We'll never stop because you're never stop, such no. a great talent. <laughs> We're lucky to have you on the show. Thank so you. Thank you. Um, coming up now, the very exciting part of the show, Excuse we me. are going to see who's in to do the Ice Bucket Challenge. So I'm going to see outside. Talissa's there. She's going to tell us who's up to take on the freezing cold ice. <laughs> Well, that was gorgeous, gorgeous Jessica, and it has come to the time of the show where the ice bucket is about to be dumped on a Studio 20 persona. Um, they're actually coming out right now. Just kidding. It's me. <laughs> so, do you want to come over? Yeah, so I'm going to get ice bucketed. <laughs> Yay, but it is for a good, uh, a good reason, for a great charity. So, thank you so much, Oprah and Beyonce, for the nomination. Just you kidding. got so many, didn't so you? So many nominations. Yeah. <laughs> no, but the guys from that uh, we showed earlier, thank you so much. I'm going to be nominating my best journalism friends who I'm going to talk to. Do I say that after I get ice? I'm so nervous. I can't even speak. All right, I'll Pick nominate after I'm ice bucketed. Right. I'll okay. Take it off you. Let's get a crowd oh, going. Yeah. Doing the ice bucket challenge, everyone. Woo! Cheer for Talisa! Can I say my shoes? No. Nah, okay. alright. <laughs> ready? Are we ready? Three, or oh, five, four, four three, two, woo! <laughs> yeah! Oh my gosh! How do you feel, Talisa? I feel really cold! <laughs> My journalism friends, Carrie Bickmore, <laughs> um, Lee Lynchin and Natalie Barr. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, we can't wait to see them do it as well, so they better stick to their, um, their nomination. Anyway, thanks so much for watching today. Um, it's probably been one of the <laughs> most cold. <laughs> <laughs> Just whilst listen. Well, okay, we've got a towel. We do look after okay. our, um, our <laughs> students here. Okay, that was great. Um, get involved because it is a great charity. Yeah. And it's <laughs> Two seconds of freezing and you'll get over Head to the um, Motor Neuron Disease website if you'd like to donate as well. Great cause, as we heard Justin um, explaining before. But otherwise, we'll see you next week. Bye.